Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Marisa Kazem and today is just a Christmassy video. So I don't really have a plan for today's video at all. All I know is that I wanted to film something kind of Christmassy. So this isn't very planned, but the first thing I'm gonna do is show you guys the books that I am planning on reading this Christmas season. If I'm messing with this throughout the video, I'm sorry. It's like I don't know, it feels weird. Anyway, so I have six different Christmas books I'm planning on reading this season, and I'm definitely gonna start one today. So first we have The Mistletoe Motive by Chloe Lees. So this is about a girl named Gabby and a guy named Jonathan. They both work at the same bookstore, but the bookstore is at threat for being closed, and they know that only one of them can continue working in the new year because the boss has hinted that he's gonna fire someone. And so they basically kind of have a competition and battle each other, and whoever has the most sales in December will get to keep their job and whoever has the less sales will resign. This book is so short. It's only 179 pages and I'm really excited to read it. I hope it's good. The last book that I read that was set in a bookstore, I hoped it was going to be good and it was terrible. So I'm really hoping that this one can redeem it somehow. Next we have Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey. So this is about a girl. She's looking at a Christmas display in the window and this man named Aiden asks her of her opinion of the decor. She says she doesn't like it, but she doesn't realize that he is the boss and that she's going to be working for him in that department store. So it's kind of an awkward situation. And then I guess they just spend time together and some romance happens. I hope this will be good. I haven't read anything by Tessa Bailey and I know that everyone loves her book. It happened one summer. I still haven't read it because I'm not always in a romance mood, but I thought I would test out her writing style with this cute little Christmas book. Also because I just keep seeing it everywhere and it's about shopping and stuff. So I thought it'd be fun. The next book is Something from Tiffany's by Melissa Hill. Okay, so this is about a man named Ethan. He is a widower and he has a daughter named Daisy. And he goes to Tiffany's to buy an engagement ring for his girlfriend, Vanessa. While looking at rings, he meets a guy named Gary, who was also looking for a ring for his girlfriend named Rachel. And then it doesn't say much else. It just says, when their worlds collide for one small moment, everything changes and only time will tell if true love will prevail. So I'm really curious to see like, what is this book about? It's a very vague description. I'm also curious about the other guy and what him proposing to his girlfriend has to do with this couple. And yeah, it just sounds fun. It doesn't sound like your classic little Christmas rom-com, which I'm really excited for because I swear so many Christmas movies and books all follow the same plot, but this sounds really unique. So I'm excited for this one. Next, we have Love Light Farms by BK Barrison. Okay, so this book is about a girl named Stella. She owns this Christmas tree farm and it's not doing so well. So she's joined this contest with an insta-famous influencer and she could win a hundred thousand dollars but to make the farm seem like a romantic destination she lied on the application and says that she owns the farm with her boyfriend but she doesn't have a boyfriend her best friend luca has come back to town and she basically just asks him to be the fake boyfriend for now and yeah it's a small town romantic comedy christmas romance which is basically exactly what i was saying i liked that this book wasn't because this is what that sounds like and this sounds different so yeah but this sounds like it's going to be fun i keep seeing this book everywhere so many people are talking about it and i've only heard good things i haven't heard any negative reviews yet and i'm hoping it'll stay that way i'm very critical about romance so i'm hoping this one will be good and so the last book is hidden sea by gregory Maguire. i am really excited about this book because this is basically a retelling of the nutcracker but also including the nutcracker's backstory i have not read the original fairy tale of the nutcracker and the mouse king but I watched the Barbie movie when I was a kid growing up and I always loved that story. And this is the same thing. It's literally about the Nutcracker and Clara, but it also includes the backstory in here. So I'm really excited to see how this is done. I think it's going to be so much fun. And most Christmas books are all romance, but this is actually a fantasy fairy tale that's set in the Christmas time. So I'm so excited for this because literally all the rest of these are romance. And so I finally get a fantasy. Also, look how cool this cover is. This is a paperback but you open it up and there's the Nutcracker artwork, which I think is really cool. But yeah, so those are all of the books that I want to read this season. Hopefully I can fit them all in. So for the rest of today's video, it is like 3.30 in the afternoon right now. And I was thinking of going out because me and my boyfriend have planned to get each other a bunch of small gifts that are just fun. And he's already got me one and I haven't got one for him yet. So I was gonna go out. I might do that tomorrow instead. This, this video is just an absolute mess. So you guys are just gonna see 
whatever footage I include because I don't have this planned at all. Today I am definitely going to start something from Tiffany's. I think this is the one I'm most intrigued to read first. I'm gonna save the two smaller ones for around Christmas time because I'm gonna be busy with friends and family and so I think shorter books will be better for around then but it is only December 7th so this will be the one that I'm starting today. Okay, so it's been a few hours and it's now later in the evening. I am on page 112, which is about that much through. And this book is really good so far. It is not as Christmassy as I thought, but I actually like it because I find that sometimes whenever it's like the Christmas season, they just go overboard. But this book, it's like, it's clearly happening around Christmas time and Christmas is significant, but the book is about both of these couples and what's going on and their situation. And it's funny and it's weird and it's awkward. And I'm just dying to know more. I like that we're following two different Different couples. It's not just a Christmas book about one couple falling in love. These two are already couples and so we're just diving into their Christmas in New York and it's just very interesting and I can't wait to see where this goes. Okay so it's the next day. I'm gonna go into Target right now. I had a few things to do this morning so it's the afternoon now but I brought my book with me. I'm not gonna read in Target but I'm gonna go to Target, do some Christmas shopping and then I'm gonna go get a coffee and read somewhere because that sounds really nice and yeah. I'm just gonna bring you guys with me. My cat loves like crinkly toys and just listen to this. I feel like she would love this. I don't like peanut butter, but my boyfriend loves it. So I think I might get this to put in his stocking. So cute. I mean, these are just a yes. Do I need to say more? Okay, so I just got out of Target. I was in there for like two and a half hours or something. That was insane. And they didn't have everything I wanted. So I was trying to get some like cute Christmas stuff for my boyfriend that's not like a proper gift because we're planning this year to get like a bunch of small gifts to put under the tree and then like an actual nice gift. And I still haven't decided on his like actual nice gift, but I got a few small gifts, but there wasn't many. I got this baking tray. I think you guys can see it. That was $3.50. I am so happy because we need a new baking tray and this year we're gonna make our own gingerbread house like we did one time like from scratch i also got this chocolate chip cookie mix i'm gonna make these today i need to buy eggs because the recipe requires one egg and i do not even have one egg at home so i need to buy eggs later but i'm gonna make this tonight but for right now i think i want to go to starbucks get a coffee because i'm exhausted and i'm gonna read some more of my book because i really want to know what's gonna happen We still have our first ever gingerbread house 
right here and it's literally fallen apart. Like all of our decor fell off of it, but we have good memories from this year. So that's why we've kept it for now. And I don't know if we're gonna keep this forever, but we've kept it for now and we're gonna make a new one this year. But now I'm going to start cooking, not cooking, baking because I really want to make some chocolate chip cookies. Okay, so maybe this wasn't maybe this wasn't the best proportion <laughs> since all of my cookies are touching, but it's okay. I'm sure they're still gonna taste amazing. We have one cookie here that's like almost not touching all of the others. Okay, so I have to give you guys an update on this book. I'm on page 238, which I don't even see. It's like that much through. I only have this much left. And this book is so good. I am so sucked into this story and I just really need to know what's gonna happen. These characters feel so realistic and as if they're like real people. I find sometimes with romances, they can feel so like fake and just like stereotypical characters. But this, like these people feel real. I feel like I know them. I don't really know if this actually counts as a romance. It kind of is, but you're following two different couples and everything's all weird and awkward and tense right now and I just don't know where the story is going to go. Okay, so I just like need to talk about this book, something from Tiffany's. I just finished this this morning. I binged so much of it last night and I finished it this morning and tell me why this book was so good. I really did not expect this silly little Christmas book to be really good, but it actually was. I was so invested in this story and I really just wanted to get to the end to find out what was gonna happen. And it was so good once we got there. I think I'm gonna rate this four stars because although it was really good, it wasn't much of a romance, which is what I thought it was. There weren't that many cute scenes in the book. I've never read a Christmas book before, never read anything around Christmas time. And this this did not let me down, which I'm not really worried about all of the other books that I'm going to read because they all sound really corny, except for the Nutcracker one. That one sounds fine, but the rest sound really cheesy. This book goes beyond Christmas into the new year. You could read this in January as well if you wanted to, and I still think it'd be a great romance to read. So the next book I think I'm going to read is Love Light Farms. I just keep seeing everyone read this book and I want to know what it's about. I'm kind of intimidated. Ugh, I can't speak. I'm kind of intimidated by the fact that it's 400 pages. I mean, this was 370 and this is 400, so it's only 30 pages more. Also, I don't know what it is about both of these books, but they're both matte and really soft and they just feel like little bricks and it's just like so satisfying. Like, I don't know why I'm finishing this one too. Literally when I got to the end and I was able to just shut it, I was like, oh my God, I finished it. But yeah, now I'm excited for this one. Okay, so it is much later in the day. I didn't get to read much earlier as I wanted to, but I am on page 87, which is not much at all. And this book is okay so far. It's very American, which I don't know if you guys know, I'm not from America. I was born and raised in England and I am I like living in America. American culture is fine, but sometimes it's very cringy. And this is like so American, it hurts. I feel like if you're from America and you read this, you might not see how it's so overly American. I also don't like the female character at the moment. I mean, there's a lot left. I might like her later on. She's very sensitive over nothing and worried about everything, even though 
there's nothing wrong. And I have found that this is a very consistent trope in romance books, but the guy is nice. He seems a lot more chill and calm. Okay, hi. So yeah, it's like a few days later. Like I said, this vlog isn't very planned at all. My boyfriend had a Christmas work party, and so we went to that, and that was fun. But I don't think I've talked at all about what I think so far of Love Light Farms. I am on page 274, so I only have that little bit left. And so far, this book is really frustrating me, which is not what I wanted, but that just seems to be the case. The female character, Stella, just freaks out about literally everything, even though there's nothing wrong in terms of her friendships and relationships. The thing that she should be freaking out about is how her tree farm is being vandalized all the time. And she's not taking it seriously. She just keeps thinking it's teenagers. And I don't really think this is a spoiler. It's not like a big important thing of the book, but it's just her tree farm is being vandalized and everyone else is like, oh, you should do something about that. That's important. And she doesn't do anything. She just sits back and goes, oh, well, I just think it's teenagers, so it's not a problem. So it's just really annoying. It it really feels like she's just a damsel in distress type of character, and she needs all her friends and love interests to come and fix everything. And I I hate this in books. Like, I really do. Also, at the moment, there was a very recent jealousy scene, which was a really big red flag from the guy. And I think the author wants me to view that as cute, but I thought he got aggressive, and I did not think that that was okay. And she just, like, laughed it off, and then told him everything he wanted to hear, and then they just went back to being normal, and I didn't like that at all. It's okay to be jealous, but it's not okay to be verbally aggressive, and that's what he did and I don't understand why no one's mentioning that. The minute I read that scene, I literally dropped my jaw open and I was just like, what? Did he really just say that? Because that was so aggressive and no one's talking about it. So I don't know. I still have 120 pages left. My goal is to finish it today because I want to be done with this book. I'm so over it, but I want to know how it ends and see if there's any more red flags. Okay, hi, so it's another day. I am terrible with this vlog, but whatever. We are going to talk about Love Light Farms. Also, give me your honest opinion. What do we think of these lash extensions? They're like at-home version of lash extensions, not proper ones, because I've gotten real ones in the past and I hated them. What do we think? I feel like they're a little too long for my eye shape, but whatever. Anyway, so Love Light Farms, I did finish it, and I have to say it's okay. It's an okay book. I think I'm gonna give this book three stars. The reason I didn't update you guys right away when I finished it was because I needed to think about it. I really liked the guy, except for that one scene where he was jealous. But other than that, I liked him. I liked her friends. I liked the setting, the farm, and everything. What I didn't like was her. The main character was so annoying. She complained about everything, and she is the cause of all the problems in this book. There aren't even problems to begin with and she creates them. If she was just herself and honest with everyone that she loves, then she wouldn't have any problems. She literally caused all the problems and that's why I found this book so annoying. Also, so this is the author's first book and I was wondering why I found this book so boring because the events that are happening are not boring, but for some reason I was bored and I was looking on Goodreads and I read someone else's review saying that during important scenes, the author would insert random bits of information and dump it on you and I realized that is it. That is the reason I found this boring. It wasn't the series of events, it was the writing style that made this boring for me. Some people love this book, like people are raving about this Christmas book. I would say it was pretty good. It felt like a regular romance, it didn't just feel like some cheesy Christmas romance, but it wasn't outstanding or amazing. But I do think I'm gonna continue the series because I looked up the other two books on Amazon and both of them are about characters that are from this book, which I am more interested in the side characters than these two. And those books are written in dual point of view. And that just sounds like it's going to be so much better. This is entirely one point of view. And I don't like single point of view for romance because how are you supposed to know if the guy is interested or not? So I really want to read the other two. I'm not going to read them anytime soon, but at some point I will. And so during this week, I've also been reading The Winter People. I'm only like 40 something percent through it. So I can't really say much about it yet. 
yet, but it is a really disturbing horror at the moment. And I like horror. I find it a very fun genre to read. I don't know where it's going to lead or how all these people are connected, but it's disturbing. So there's that. And I just started Hidden Sea this morning. And this is already so much more interesting than Love Light Farms. And I'm only like 19 pages in. Like I've barely started and I really like it so far. And I'm so excited to see where this goes. Anyway, that is the end of this video. I'm sorry it's all over the place, but if you have stuck around, thank you so much for watching. If you are still here at this point in the video, leave a snowflake emoji down below. But yeah, happy bookmas everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next one.